The world's large coral reefs are located in the tropics, between latitudes 35 degrees north and 28 degrees south, and cover approximately 0.2% of the total surface of the sea. They are perhaps the most beautiful nature reserves in the world, bursting with life in all shapes and colors. Reefs are built by colonies of coral polyps. Mainly stony corals form the core of these enormous structures. A reef sustains itself by growing its own community. When a polyp dies, its skeleton remains. But, fortunately, new polyps have already formed upon it. After many years, the skeletons form huge structures that are sometimes described as large underwater cities. If we take a closer look at a reef, we see that it's made up of various coral species that often differ greatly in shape, color and size. There are more than 450 species of hard coral. They are fragile animals that have a hard external skeleton to protect them from their enemies. The corals live in symbiosis with minuscule small plants called coral algae. They are indispensable for the construction of their limestone houses and the algae in turn are protected by and feed on the polyps waste. Like all plants, these algae need sunlight. This is why corals usually live in the shallower parts of the oceans. To grow, you have to eat, and corals feed by plucking plankton and other single-celled animals from the water with their tentacles. Most hard corals grow slowly, very slowly around 5 to 25 millimeters per year. The formation of these structures has taken centuries. The reefs are bursting with life. Although coral reefs cover less than 0.25% of the oceans, about a quarter of all fish species are directly dependent on them. They find food and protection here. Coral fish are often small and brightly colored, and this makes them easy prey for their enemies. At the slightest danger, they also flee and hide among the coral formations. But even larger fish that live in schools don't venture too far from the reef. Because danger comes from all directions. The lionfish is a formidable predator for these small fairy bastards. He waits patiently for one to come close enough to swallow in a fraction of a second.
Other hunters are lying in wait on the edges of the coral from where they can seize them as fast as lightning. Small fish must be very alert here. Larger fish must be on the alert for this moray. She is looking for bigger game. They can be dangerous, especially at night. That is why it's safer to sleep among the corals at night. This surgeon fish just wasn't paying enough attention. Coral is a source of food for other fish. With his strong beak, the parrotfish scrapes off algae, but also the living coral. After he has worked the crushed coral inside, his body absorbs the food particles, and the indigestible remains leave his body in the form of sand. Some researchers estimate that he can excrete up to 90 kilograms of sand every year. At night, these crown of thorns starfish go into action. Their food consists mainly of corals. They pour their digestive juices over the polyps and then eat them like a kind of coral soup. Apart from a food supply, the reef is also useful for other things. It is also the perfect hiding place for all kinds of smaller animals. For them, the coral reef is an ideal place to live. The larvae of this Christmas tree worm bore a hole in the coral and later on, the worm forms a limestone tube where it will spend the rest of its life. The only thing we can see of the worm are its brightly colored tentacle crowns. They serve not only to let it breathe, but also to filter plankton out of the water. The tentacles also contain sensory cells with which they can sense trouble and then disappear like lightning into their tube. But a box worm does not live forever. A vacant home soon gets a new resident. The coral reef is a complex network of species. They are all linked to each other in one way or another, as an ally, as a competitor, as a prey, or as a predator. Only species that specialize make it on the reef. Coral reefs are more prolific than rainforests in terms of the amount of animals they harbor. But there is a major threat to our corals. Our seas have been warming up steadily for the past 75 years, and now it's happening faster than ever before. It has a major impact on ocean life. Coral reefs are particularly vulnerable. A rise of three degrees is already too much for coral. Coral bleaching is the first step towards an almost irreversible decline. As the temperature is rising, the reef is becoming a wasteland. The coral is very important for man, and man is important for the coral, because it is his job to protect it, and by doing so, protect himself. <laughs>